टुडे विल डिस्कस अबाउट द यूजीसी नोटिफिकेशन व्हिच हैज कम इन प्लेस ऑन 7 नवंबर 2022 एंड दिस पर्टिकुलर नोटिफिकेशन इज अबाउट दिस मिनिमम स्टैंडर्ड एंड प्रोसीजर फॉर अवार्ड ऑफ पीएचडी डिग्री एंड दैट इज द रेगुलेशन 2022 सो कैंडिडेट और स्टूडेंट दोस हु आर लुकिंग टू एनरोल देमसेल्फ फॉर द पीएचडी प्रोग्राम दे शुड नो दिस पर्टिकुलर रेगुलेशन अर्लियर वी हैव द रेगुलेशन 2016 एंड इट there are sort of amendment over the existing regulation and now onwards it can be called as the regulation 2022 towards the award of phd degree so this this will be applied to or this is applicable to all the universities those are under ugc and the eligibility criteria for admission to phd program this is what we need to understand candidate who have completed so you can see candidate who have completed a first year or two semester program after four year or eight semester bachelor degree program so someone has completed btech and after that he or she has completed one year or two semester you know uh, program so he or she is eligible or the same or the someone else who has completed three year bachelor degree and after that he or she has completed two year or four semester of master program like bsc then after that msc two year then he or she is now eligible and again the at least with 55% of mark in aggregate or equivalent grade scale that is required after that the re relaxation can be for the five mark or equivalent for uh, you know candidate having sc st obc or different level or economically you know weaker section cases so that is also there 5% of relaxation is also there and you know there is another case like someone willing to enroll uh, after btech or after you know four year of bachelor degree so four year that means eighth semester has, uh, need to be completed so with with that somebody can um, go for phd or not yes it is possible but he or she has to score minimum 75% of mark in aggregate or equivalent grade scale that we know you know sometime when we talk about the grade scale there there is sort of formula you know when we uh, um, you know equivalent it with the percentage of mark score so 70% of uh, percent of mark in aggregate or equivalent grade scale that you have to justify and again a relaxation is there for the 5% of mark as uh, i was talking about for the earlier cases like uh, sc st obc and weaker section cases so that is there then the candidate who has completed mphil program also you know they should also have at least 55% of aggregate mark or equivalent grade scale so that is also um, you know possible with after mphil somebody can enroll for phd program then we'll understand about the duration of it a phd program shall be for a minimum duration of 3 year you see 3 year and that can include including the coursework and a min maximum duration of 6 year for the date of admission to the phd program so minimum when we talk about minimum 3 year then we talk about maximum that is 6 year 6 year so but in few cases you know that is possible that you uh, win the candidate can uh, uh, may need some extra time so additional 2 year can be given through a process of re registration that is possible but with re registration with uh, all sort of you know hei concern and uh, the committee and the approval with that it is possible with uh, sort of you know uh, justified reason and it should not uh, exceed in total the phd program in that case should not exceed 8 year from the date of admission into the phd program so this is very important the date of admission is the initial point where the phd program that start so provided for the a female you know phd scholar and person with disabilities uh, having more than 40% are disabilities that uh, sort of certification might be required may be allowed an additional relaxation of 2 year above 
now two year can be you know given relaxation the total period for the completion of phd program in this particular case should not exist 10 year so this should not exit 10 years so this is conditional cases where wherever applicable so now if let's say a female phd scholar may be you know provided uh, maternity leave or child care leave and that is possible for 240 days in the entire duration of the phd program so that is also possible now let's talk about the procedure for the admission and uh, the admission shall be you know based on the criteria notified by the institution keeping in view the guideline norms that you know that being issued by ugc and uh, and there are few you know ways or you can say the path that can be followed for towards admission of the phd program one one can be like uh, hei may admit you know student who qualify Fellowship, scholarship in UGC NET, UGC CSIR, NET, GATE, CED or similar national level test based on an interview. So now there is a test uh, at national level and after that there will be an interview. And the other way, the HEI may admit student through entrance exam conducted at, at the level of individual HEI. That means the higher educational institute they can conduct their own test and the syllabus should contain 50% of research methodology and 50% shall be from the subject specific it was there earlier uh, i do recall and uh, student who have secured 50% of mark in the entrance test are now eligible uh, to be called for the interview so in the entrance from uh, from let's say from 100 marks they have to have 50 marks only then they can be called for the interview so this this you can uh, this the stakeholder need to take into consideration then there is a relaxation of five percent mark elaborate uh, in the entrance examination for the candidate belonging to uh, this category which i was uh, discussing in the um in in the admission phase as well then the HEIs may decide the number of eligible students to be called for interview based on the number of phd seats available so this is also conditional in few cases the like in the department there may not be that sufficient number of seat even though there is eligible candidate to be called for but based on the seat that is eligible they should call the eligible student provided that the selection candidate based on the entrance state conducted by hei the weight is uh, uh, shall be you know 70 percent for the entrance test and 30 percent for the performance in the interview or um, in the interview moreover the university which are eligible to conduct phd program shall notify in prospectus well in advance this the institution they should uh, take into consideration or even in the website of the institute specifying the number of seat for the admission subject discipline wise distribution of the available seat criteria for the admission the procedure for the admission and all other relevant information for the candidate it should be available in their uh, website in their institutional website adhered to the national state level reservation policy or in a few cases you know um yeah this is the state level that is mentioned so uh, there are you know few cases that is applicable well state level wise also some sort of reservation can be possible so the higher educational institution shall maintain a list of phd supervisor specifying the name of the supervisor his or her designation the department school center along with the detail of the phd scholar that they are you know the, they have with them specifying the name of the registered phd scholar the topic of his or her research and the date of admission so those already enrolled and uh, the supervisor they are they are you know supervising those phd scholar those details also should be available on the website of the institution and update this list every academic year this again the institution they should take into consideration uh, so that whenever you know a, a candidate look into their institute profile or the you know, website they should able to know who is available who is supervisor is available and 
uh, on which area they they are working on so the, the, so based on their expertise uh, or the or the student interest they can you know contact the particular supervisor that's why this sort of information has to be there in the institutional website then allocation of phd supervisor i thought of uh, keeping it in in the next video but uh, because it is uh, also applicable for the phd scholar or the newly you know enrolled phd scholar or the candidate that, that they are looking for phd program so you uh, can uh, you uh, we can discuss this point as well so allocation of phd so uh, or research supervisor there uh, there has to be some eligibility criteria to be a research supervisor co supervisor and and the number of phd scholar that are permissible for the supervisor so on that already you know uh, this 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 point were there in the existing regulation there has been some changes like uh, who who can you know uh, guide or who 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 can be the supervisor who can be the co supervisor all uh, sort of thing uh, is uh, there so you can um, you can go through it in detail but let's say like adjunct faculty member they can be co supervisor they cannot be the research supervisor and if uh, let's say the co supervisor from within the same department or the other department uh, the same institution or 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 let's say from other institution may be permitted with the approval of the competent authority so that is also po possible for enrollment of the co supervisor in few cases in few cases like interdisciplinary cases also all uh, our multidisciplinary cases research work if required a co supervisor from outside the department school center college university may be appointed an eligible professor this is important professor associate professor and assistant professor can guide up to 8 6 and 4 phd scholar respectively at any given time so not beyond that number in case of relocation of female phd scholar due to marriage or other uh, sort of reason the research data shall be allowed to the, uh, can be allowed to transfer to the hei another hei re relocate provided all the other condition in the regulation are being followed and the research work does not you know belong to a project sanction to the parent institution or supervisor by any funding agency if this is the clause then he or uh, c basically need to complete your uh, complete it or need to give the due credit to the parent institution and the supervisor for the for the part of the research already being undertaken and faculty member with less than 3 years of service before the super uh, superannuation shall not be allowed to take fresh or new research scholar under their supervision so this point also need to be taken into consideration uh, however such faculty member can continue to supervise the existing phd scholar those who have already been registered until the superannuation and as co supervisor after the superannuation but not after attaining age of 70 years neither they should able to supervise or They they are not eligible to supervise, or they should not. Uh, they again they are not eligible to co-supervise after seventy years. Then admission of uh, international PhD uh, student in PhD program also. They also need to follow the same sort of guideline which we've been uh, discussing. And uh, again, um, the uh, the supervisor can have two international research scholar on on a super. Uh, numeracy basis over and above the permitted number of PhD scholar as specified in clause six point three. So this is there. Then PhD through part time. This uh, many of the cases when uh, you know PhD candidate or the candidate they are looking for PhD program, they want to do it via part time manner. So PhD program in part time will be permitted, provided all the condition stipulated in this regulation need to be fulfilled. The condition are. they have to obtain the no objection certificate through the candidate for you know through the candidate for the part time program from the appropriate authority in the organization where the candidate is employed the hei need to obtain it 
and the candidate is permitted in that this should clearly state that the candidate is permitted to pursue studies on part time basis his or her official you know duties um, permit his um, him or her to devote sufficient time for research if required he or she will be uh, relieved from the duty to complete the coursework because for coursework sometime they need to be there physically at least for a uh, duration of six months or so so that that i am not discussing now so for that the you know the the organization or the authority under which they are affiliated they should uh they give some sort of relaxation to the candidate so that they can able to complete their course Relation is like no hei you see no hei higher education institution or research institution of central government or state government shall conduct phd program through distance or online mode so that is they are not eligible to do so so that uh the candidate they should understand that if they are getting sort of advertisement or offer to have their degree in online mode or in distance mode for phd degree they should avoid and now issuing of provisional uh, certificate this i have jumped i have escaped few of the point that is possible you know many of the cases you need to have your uh, provisional certificate so prior to the actual award which uh, which normally you receive at the convocation you can have uh, a provisional certificate to the effect that the phd is being awarded in accordance to the uh, provision of this uh, regulation so that is their advisory committee and their function then the evaluation assessment minimum standard credit for the award of phd degree then the research uh, administrative role in infrastructure that a hei need to maintain and award of phd degree prior to notification of this regulation this point are uh, very common to the existing regulation but this evaluation and assessment uh, there has been a big change or or you can say before final thesis it is not necessary to publish in general so that is there the earlier it was mentioned that you need to have two conference proceeding or the candidate has to present then two uh, national uh, a publication in the journal uh, but again now it is not there in 2022 but whether uh, it is a good uh, way to judge it or should a re researcher or a candidate who is looking to enroll themselves for phd program they should publish or not on that i will make another video as there is no mandate to publish so on no uh, minimum condition you know you are at, at 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 a different scale now for the career growth what is the importance of publication that we'll be discussing in uh, the future video and uh, thank you uh, for you know watching this particular video and please do like share and comment uh, whenever uh, whenever you feel uh, that uh, uh, there is some sort of queries with you related to this topic that i'm been covering uh, and again thank you for watching this particular video thank you